Now, here's a thought. Can one of the longest surviving insects hold the key in shaping our future aviation paradigm? When looking at different aircraft pictures from the past, one would be hard-pressed to find a flying machine that piques the interest more than the Ryu 102T Alarian. It was designed in 1937 to fly in the style of the most lethal predator of the insect world, the dragonfly, which has supreme flying capabilities. A dragonfly can maneuver in all directions, including flying backwards and glide without having to beat wings. The 102T aircraft was eventually consigned to history, but it left several lingering questions. What if its wings did not fold during the 1938 wind tunnel test at high speed? What if the investors wouldn't have lost interest in it? What if the start of World War II did not get this project dead and buried? There is a silver lining though. In the recent past, extensive research has been done that has illuminated the benefits and in particular the energy economy of the Dragonfly flight mechanism. On a separate front, electric aviation technology is allowing us greater flexibility in aircraft design. This begs the question, has the time arrived to revive the 102T Alarian and other similar aircraft from fiction, such as the Flapter from Laputa Castle in the Sky. We will explore this and the state-of-the-art powering mechanisms like artificial muscles in this video. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we aim to bring for you all the technologies and their advancement from the world of sustainable air travel. Subscribe today to get all of our updates. Mankind has always looked towards nature for inspiration, and so it wasn't surprising that in the effort to achieve flight, we tried to mimic birds. The first aircraft design, even in the pre-Da Vinci times, were ornithopters, or in other words, flying machines with flapping wing mechanism. In the early days of aviation, these contraptions proved to be rather unsuccessful. The reasons for the lack of success stemmed from the unavailability of suitable materials, lack of understanding of the complex flow behavior that entails a flapping wing flight, and the low power. The Wright brothers came along and simplified things using powered propellers with fixed wings to get things off the ground. And that is the technology that we have utilized the most in building our modern aviation paradigm. To be fair to the Wright brothers, their wing mechanism wasn't completely fixed and it did warp, but it wasn't a flapping wing mechanism by any means. Even our rotor aircraft are basically fixed wing aircraft in which the wings are rotated through the air. Going over history, one notices that the ornithopter mechanism did not see as much interest, but it also never left our consciousness completely. There have been many aircraft built in the last century that were based on flapping wing mechanism. At the start of the 20th century, there was E.P. Frost's ornithopter that had bird-like flapping wings. His machine managed to jump when powered with a motorcycle engine in 1905. Step forward to 1942, we see the first successful manned ornithopter developed by Adelbert Schmidt. It was fitted with a 3 horsepower or 2.2 kilowatt engine which allowed it to fly up to 15 minutes at a time. The hind wing in the aircraft was the one that flapped while the front wing remained fixed. To pursue the development of the ornithopters, there were prizes and awards dedicated for the best designs, but with the condition that the aircraft has to be human powered. So there has been effort in this direction most notable of which was the Snowbird that successfully took off in 2010. From the 1970 onwards, as the camera technology improved, it allowed us to capture high detail images in slow motion and later super slow motion. We are able to understand the flight dynamics of birds and insects much better. At the same time, our progress in computational fluid dynamics also allowed us to gain an insight into flow behavior. CFD helped to validate the theories that were based on physical observation and experiments. A great number of articles have been published on the flight dynamics of all types of avian creatures, from the insects to birds and bats. 
The recent surge in interest is because of the many ascertained advantages of an ornithopter. The technology can be applied to drones, if not manned aircraft. The first advantage is the potential for vertical takeoff and landing. The second is the fact that thrust and lift both are generated by the wings and so the drag inducing structures such as nacelle housings of jet engines and propellers are not needed. There's also the possibility of energy savings because of higher propulsive efficiency. And lastly, the high maneuverability offered by an ornithopter can be matched by modern day small size quadcopters, but not at the same energy consumption levels. So let's have a look at what the recent research has revealed. A study done by James Usherwood et al. has shown the energy advantage of the Dragonfly flight mechanism. The secret lies in the phase difference of flapping between the front and the hind wing of the dragonfly. Note that if the phase difference between the front and the hind wings is not optimal, then it does not make sense to have two pair of wings. In fact, double pair of wings are less aerodynamically efficient compared to a single pair. But with the appropriate fore and hind wing phasing, Aerodynamic power requirements can be reduced up to 22% compared to a single pair of wings. For this to happen though, a phase shift of plus 25% is required. This phase shift is important because having the wrong phase shift can also reduce the thrust significantly. The theory behind the excess lift generation by the Dragonfly so far is that the leading edge vortex that is developed by the movement of the front wings is anticipated by the hind wings and it is this wing wake interaction that is responsible for the increased lift. The hind wing is able to capture the energy that is wasted by the front wing. It is similar to contra rotating coaxial rotor blades where the swirled component of the exit stream of the air from the top rotor is anticipated by the lower rotor which changes its direction to a more straight and narrow flow thus giving more thrust. NASA, in their research paper titled Wing Flapping with Minimum Energy, have termed this as counterflapping and have linked it with minimization of induced losses. In the recent past, radio-controlled dragonfly-shaped ornithopters have been made successfully. Festo's bionic opter was developed with an incredible wing design that has 9 degrees of freedom. The wings, while flapping, could also rotate from horizontal cord position to a completely vertical cord. This remarkable machine with 63 cm wingspan can move in all directions and hover. But despite its complexity, it doesn't exactly mimic the dragonfly. The huge gap between the front and the hind wings suggests much less wing wake interaction than that in an actual dragonfly. Furthermore, the position of the wings is also different, that is they are attached on the side of the thorax rather than on the top. A more simple yet effective design has been developed by Dr. Kazuhiko Kakuta from Japan which utilizes James Usherwood's research of flapping wings with a phase difference. His model has 67 centimeter wingspan and the phase difference between the wings was customizable. Interestingly, Dr. Kakuta had earlier also made the flapter from Laputa, but his later model of Dragonfly showed much superior performance as it utilized the research. The question that we come to now is about the scaling up of the double wing pair mechanism. Would the benefits dissipate or increase for large sized drones or manned aircraft? It has to be understood that with increased scales, the Reynolds number is higher, which means inertial forces dominate the flow more than the viscous forces. Generally speaking, the vortex formation is much easier at larger Reynolds number than at smaller values. Fossil records show that in the late Permian era, dragonflies were huge with a wingspan of 75 centimeters, same as that of an eagle. So we know that we can go up to 75 centimeters wingspan but can we go higher? The answer to this question can be found in the initiative taken by Russian engineers. They developed the Serenity, which is a 10 foot long ornithopter. It had not two, but four pair of wings with the middle pair coupled together. 
They have claimed that scaling up the design brings with it higher aerodynamic efficiency. From the video which they have released on their channel, it is apparent that the phase difference between their wings is more than positive 25%. Also, all the wings are of the same size and are rigid. Note that in a dragonfly, the hind wings are bigger than the fore wings. So it can be safely said that this aircraft has a huge margin for improvement, but nonetheless, they have to be appreciated for developing the Serenity, which is a marvel of engineering. One has to remember that we had already designed manned ornithopters by 1942, the Schmidt ornithopters being a case in point, but this had a single flapping wing pair rather than double pair that we see in dragonflies. It has to be considered with flapping wings that there are a lot more factors at play than with fixed wings. There is the angular span of stroke, there is the frequency of wing beat, there's also the changing angle of attack. Now, there are some animals, including hummingbirds and insects, that generate lift during both upstroke and downstroke of the wing. This, however, requires the angle of attack of the wing to be changed constantly and the addition of a rotational component to the wing movement. While a motor, a CV joint, and crank mechanism, such as in Festo's bionic opter, may be able to achieve that, but there are simpler methods at our disposal. This is where we introduce you to the entomopter. You see, in a real dragonfly, the flapping is achieved by the tensing and relaxation of a single muscle. For this reason, the dragonfly can move all of its wings independently. The same functionality can be achieved with an artificial reciprocating chemical muscles. Just like an engine, it is a regenerative device that converts chemical energy into motion through a direct non-combustion chemical reaction. It can use a monopropellant such as hydrogen peroxide as fuel. So an entomopter is an ornithopter with a reciprocating chemical muscle which also uses the byproduct gas released from the chemical reaction to further its aerodynamic advantage. The high energy density of the chemical fuel can make the flight last longer. At present, an entomopter for surveying Martian landscape is being designed under the supervision of NASA. While reciprocating chemical muscle or RCM has its advantages, but is there an electrical alternative for the RCM? Yes, there is. There are polymer-based artificial muscles that can show expansion and contraction based on electrical impulses. Artificial muscle has a high power to weight ratio and is extremely flexible and versatile compared with traditional rigid actuators. For these reasons, artificial muscles have the potential to be highly disruptive emerging technology. The exciting thing is that they will allow us to power up the ornithopter drones and manned aircrafts just like an actual dragonfly. So there are indeed exciting times ahead. Just imagine the Opener's Blackfly and Airbus's Vahana in an ornithopter design. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from this video, please do give it a thumbs up. You'll find links for the information referenced in the video in the description section. Thank you for your attention.